Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JTO Sullivan. Today, Aiden O'Connell, the Raiders, big win. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. So before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of this channel. Not only is it a great cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. So if you enjoy the way that I talk and teach ball, hop over to the Quarterback School Patreon community, join, become a member, and get even more Quarterback School content. I usually do long-form videos over there, really trying to create the environment of what it's like in an NFL quarterback room. So all sorts of nuance, detail depth about not only the quarterback position but high level offense and defensive football hop over there join become a member i appreciate your support as for this video let's get into it aiden o'connell the raiders cleansing themselves of the josh mcdaniels experiment right out the gate here three by two man free middle field closed man the number three gap i'm watching number three at the line of scrimmage Yee <laughs> double mailbox within five yards Love going empty here. We'll see here. Aiden O'Connell does a nice job here of taking advantage of what I'm going to call these like pop layups, like surprise fast breaks. 16, great job at the line of scrimmage. Yeet. Oh, my God. <laughs> I need sound effects, man. Yeet. Goodness. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I can recall ever seeing someone do the double mailbox within the first five yards. <laughs> Full scarecrow right there. I love it. Big chunk. Nice job. I mean, take advantage of what's there. Not going to apologize for the Giants doing whatever the hell they're doing on defense. But this is a great job here. You see them shift to three by two. You know it's man. The linebacker goes. Middle field close. Normally, I'm thinking the inside guys are going to win on inside leverage just like that by the number three. Probably not that much. But that's a really nice job. Nice chunk. Great job from O'Connell being able to see it, get the ball out quickly. He really felt like he was in command at the line of scrimmage in this game. Not sure if things change or their procedure at the line of scrimmage changed, but he looked confident, locked in, catch man free, rushing five, take advantage of the middle field. Let's go. Next one here, third and four. This is a rough one for me. This is an old school play. Trying to get a slant down here to Adams. He gets doubled. No, back up to the number one on what I'm used to calling an under. And Aiden O'Connell here gets a little bit exposed footwork-wise. Now, this is not an easy footwork thing. And we'll talk through the pass protection too because I think they overcomplicated it as well. But you get this fast form motion, linebacker goes, they're doubling Adams to the right. You can see, and you should probably know exactly what I'm going to say. This is not easy footwork, but we're lined up to the right, back to the left. You just got to say, you got to hang right there like that with that base. You can't go this. Heel click, ball sprays all over the place. Tough miss on third and four when it's there. Now, this is an old school play, in my opinion, and I don't honestly remember it being that prevalent until this year. I feel like it's made a resurgence. I'm used to calling it kangaroo. It's really just a slant and an under. When I'm used to calling it an under or a five-yard in. It's back in the day, it was paired universally with a corner and a middle field read or a post. Now, those things would pop sometimes and alert, mostly practice throws. In reality, the play is usually one here and two here. And then it's oftentimes, back in the day, it was paired, paired with a wide or a swing. And so I like it here with the fast four. We'll talk through what that means with the pass protection. But at the end of the day, it's not the easiest footwork in the world because you have to set your feet to throw the slant down here to the bottom. And then if that's a no, so we don't like that, you have to reset your feet to where the under is going to be. And that's not easy to do in a quick game-ish setting. But you can see here, in my opinion, it's certainly there. Like this is there. We got to make that throw. I think O'Connell's feet gets a little bit exposed here. First, let's watch down to the bottom, watch the safety, double up Adams. So you're not going to throw that slant into that safety, right? That's a full-on double team. So we're off of that. Good read. Now, when we go back up there, just settle your feet, no heel click, and throw it to the under. He's got space. That's a first down. we got to make that throw. Just one to two. Our feet let us down. We end up spray missing it, and it's tough. Now, pass protection-wise, I talked on the first snap about I liked O'Connell at the line of scrimmage here pointing this thing out. Talk through exactly what's going on here. This is five-person protection. And uh, this doesn't necessarily matter for this play because they're not hot. 
But if we've got five person protection, because the back is gone, right? He's going what I'm going to call fast motion to the left, tear, whatever you want, fast four. He's the fourth eligible over here. Well, when you set this point here in the pass protection unit, it sure looks like they're pointing here. So if the center now is going to go to the right, okay, so the center is going here, okay, because the center does go to the right. So the center goes to the right. When you've got this double mug, okay, A gap, A gap, but you've got this fast four motion too, this is where motion screws with pass protection points. Everybody wants to do motion until it messes with your protection. So let me clear this off. This fast four burst man, if one of these guys goes, it should be an auto repoint to the other one. Okay, let me say that again. I know a great course that goes into significant detail about stuff like this. The motion we know is going to go on offense. We're pointing here as the mic. They are sliding to what we're going to call the will right here. So the offensive line right now is going here. The center is going here. The right side is sliding to the right. Well, when the will, okay, right here, runs with the back because it's man to man, we don't need the center going to the right. That's an auto recheck. Now, maybe their system doesn't have the capacity to do it, but I'm telling you, this YouTuber is not the only one that plays pass protection like that. Okay, this is pretty simple stuff. So watch the motion go. Watch the backer go. Why are we going to the right center? And again, I'm not blaming the center or Aiden O'Connell. I'm saying this is a system deficiency. It's, it's not easy, but it's also not calculus. And again, <laughs> the footwork, you can just see. It's a, it's a bad dance. And that's way too much movement. Nothing polished about this. Whoop, 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 whoop. Spray. Punt. Next one here. Nice job again from Aiden O'Connell working in the middle of the field. Again, voided. Nice job finding 13. I think he must be a new guy on their team. I'm not familiar with him. Great job here. He's technically not hot. The center's going to the left. They're sliding to the left. This is picked up theoretically if the left tackle does whatever the hell the left tackle is supposed to do. Not that. But this is a nice job again. Just taking what the defense gives you. This looks like, well, I'm not even going to say that. Originally, I thought it was Haas Y Juke. But that number two down here to the bottom looks, well, I guess that's Simi. We'll call it Haas Y Juke or Haas New Guy Juke. Nice job from O'Connell this time putting his foot in the back in the ground. Boom. Nice base. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right on him. Nice little chunk. Again, really like them getting into empty, getting the ball out quick. Again, this should be a slide to the left. So once the center goes to the left, technically this is a four-person slide. I know I keep saying center. But it's technically these four going to these four. Now, how they want to sort this thing out here, you would hope that the left tackle, left guard would be able to get to this widest rusher. See exactly what they do here. But O'Connell does a nice job just seeing the void in the middle of the field, putting it on that juke. Again, to me, I, I'm not familiar with what 74 is doing. It looks like he just loses his mind, like he's so locked in on 45. That, that ain't it. Nice job, though, from O'Connell. Nice job. New guy. First down. Next one here. Beautiful go ball up top. Now, it ends up being a best release go, in my opinion, up top. Keeps his stride. It's an even better catch than throw. Obviously, you'd love to keep him in stride and have him score. But this is a big-time play from 11, making that diving catch going all the way down the field. I like the idea of blocking him up. I'm never going to like the idea of a play-action go ball outside the numbers. It just doesn't make sense to me. I think it's worth paying attention to coverage-wise here. Normally, I would say it's even worse to do play action and take a shot like this because play action, shot, play action to me is trying to impact the second level and safety types who have a little bit more of a run fit. To me, this is a true almost cover zero up here. Best release, inside go, really nice throw. Because it's zero, in my opinion, up top because we're essentially playing middle field close, but we're shading to Adams. Like this is not true traditional whiteboard middle field close coverage. He's shading down here. He has no chance to make a play on this. So you've got this kind of one-on-one -on -one opportunity down the field. So if the play action makes you feel more in rhythm, knock yourself out. It doesn't make sense to me, but it works right here. Nice job getting it up on time. Don't outrun the club there. Beautiful throw, even better catch. But again, watch that safety. And that safety is way down here outside the bottom hash. He's never going to make a play on that. Never. He's yards away from making that play, and it's just a tough spot for that corner. 
nice job here blocking it up. So we're going to big boy, eight person protection, ball out in rhythm, drop it right down the line. Again, you can see him running right down the bottom of the numbers. No fade out right down the line. And that's a hell of a catch. That's a massive, massive play. Next one here, third and five. This ends up being just a check down to the back, and the back kind of fights his way into a first down, breaks a couple tackles, falls forward, first down. I put this on here just because, to me, Aiden O'Connell here looks like a pro quarterback. No panic. Get it to the check down. Getting a completion on third down is okay. Let the back go fight for it and get yourself a first down. Now, I think if it was preseason, maybe he tries to rip this thing in. You know, you can make the argument for whatever the hell this route is. You could potentially throw that. Certainly like this guy on ins versus outside leverage. But these guys get a little bit of depth. That second level gets a little bit of depth to make this thing a little blurry. So not the end of the world. Let this check down fight through here. Give it to him going forward. Make him miss. They get paid to run with the ball. Get it in their hands. Let them do what they do. First down. We're not taking hits. We're not holding on to the ball. The timeliness of this thing. Get the ball out. No. Check down. Make somebody miss, fall forward, first down. It's just how third down is played in the league. You don't have to hold on to it every single time. Not every single, single thing is a shot. Get it down. Nice job from 2-2. Two, two. First down, let's go. Next one here. I thought this play really kind of exposed Aiden O'Connell a little bit just as far as not quite understanding what he's seeing quite yet. And I'm not saying it's easy. It's not easy. I think this is a good read versus middle field closed man, traditional man. But when you've got a guy like Adams out there who demands the attention of the safeties, it's not traditional as far as the coverage that you're going to see on the back end. You're going to see things skewed towards him. So what I'm talking about here is middle field closed, go ball. And that, that looks like pre-snap, middle field closed, go ball. But it's not true closed. He is hedging towards 17. He is cheating over here. So really, it's kind of a, a loose bracket, a loose two-on-one. They have two for one. And so this type of throw, which normally you'd say, hey, give your guy a shot one-on-one, -on -one, it's really, hey, man, uh, we're exposing our best player, and he's getting smacked, and it's not acceptable. Do not do that again. The other thing about it is once you kind of understand, like, hey, I'm not seeing traditional coverages like I learned in a really good course that's available through the quarterback school, wink, gun, Okay, we actually talk about this course too, I think. <laughs> this idea being that you have a dominant guy, he's going to demand attention. Well, then everything else is more open. So besides for getting turf monstered here by the shield, this over is going to be open one-on-one. -on -one. You got one-on-ones everywhere because the safety is going towards 17 every throwing situation. So again, watch that safety cheat way over the top. I mean, that is not traditional closed coverage. It's almost like just two man up there. And again, that is getting your guy exposed. <laughs> I mean, that's borderline defenseless as well. But man, you do not like seeing your best player sit like that on their knees on the other team's sideline wondering, what the hell am I doing here? Oh my God. Oh my God. Not the type of throw you want. Certainly not what you want to do to your guys. That is a fast way to get guys on the perimeter pissed off. Oh wow. Next one here is a fast way to get me pissed off. We're going to run stick up top. The clear decides he's not going to run hard, and he misses an opportunity for a massive play and maybe a touchdown. My guy 16, you got to run. We got to be running full speed, 1,000 miles an hour. This is the NFL. Now, this is one of those things where you just cringe when this comes up in the team meeting room because this is a big, big play. I love the vision from Aiden O'Connell here. This, to me, is a must-outside release. Go. Okay, now maybe, okay, maybe it's a quick out that converts to a fade versus half field safety just because of the split. That's why I say that. So it probably is. So this conversion to a fade, just because it's a conversion, you still have to run a hundred percent. This is, this is not the type of stuff you want. This is the bad, bad film. This is bad, bad, bad film. So we come out of this thing, we jog, it's bad enough to jog on film, but then he throws it to you and it would be a big play. But because you're not running hard, it's not there. So what is this play? To me, it's probably all stick up top. That's just stick that then converts versus cloud or rolled up corner. And then flat slant. 
A lot of teams run iterations of this. If I had to guess the read, I would say it's open and closed. Okay, so we catch open right here. We're going to work the all stick up top. It converts versus the cloud, and we're jogging. Oh, dog. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Don't be the guy that jogs on an NFL film, especially when they throw it to you for a chance for a big, big play. Oh, my God. That is rough. Nice job from Aiden O'Connell. Nice identification. Just got, just got good job seeing it. I'm not sure what exactly is going on here with their cutting with Vegas because my guy, the right tackle, whiffs. We'll see eight whiff later in the game as well. Pass protection and eight, they, they might not go together. That's a missed opportunity, though. Go, geez. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe. Hit the bell. Get the notifications. I really appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me, so thank you for doing that. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, you know about it. Join, become a member, get even more Quarterback School content. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics, RPOs, tempos, pass protection. How to beat every coverage is the best-selling course. We even have an entire offense available, so hop over there and enroll in the courses. The links are in the video description. We also have quarterback school free resources. Those resources are linked in the video description. Everything from pass pro quiz to a play calling tool to a free quick game course. So hop over there and take advantage of those free resources. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, third and 10. Again, going to work the middle of the field. Again, a bit of a bastard coverage. Again, they're doubling 17. So it does kind of screw with any type of like coverage reads if that makes sense, because it is such a unique look. You almost have to kind of like block it out of your mind if you're not going to throw it to them versus certain double coverages or brackets. But this to me is just a one-step dart. Okay, so what this play is, first I'll throw up the play. This is where the ball goes on the quick slant with another slant. Down here it's like an intermediate out and a go. Okay, lots of teams run iterations of this. Normally, you know, who knows what the read is. It doesn't really matter what the read is because – this safety is coming down and he is doubling out here. So we've got these three are all kind of playing the same slant. So you end up at the end of the day, you can pretend, and we'll just erase them. This guy's not here and these guys aren't here. So now look at this slant versus off coverage with nobody in the middle of the field. That's a pretty good look versus outside leverage. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Take that all day, every day. Again, really nice job from O'Connell seeing it getting the ball out, certainly work in the middle part of the field, you know, coverage wise. When you do these types of bastard coverages, sometimes things like this are going to pop. Also nice pass protection. I'm a big fan of this type of pass protection where you walk the back up and you're in double mug when you're going to do slide. So instead of the back getting collisioned in front of the quarterback, he's getting collisioned at the line of scrimmage. Nice job. Nice little chunk first down. Next one here, third and one. I love this from Aiden O'Connell. It sure looks like he audibles here. He's under center. Check, check, check. We're going to go gun. We're catching zero. We're going to go quick outs on the outside. If you play DB, nice little trick to know if it's a run or pass. Watch 17 up top. Anytime a wide receiver does this with their hands, <laughs> spit, <laughs> rub them together, probably like their chances of getting the ball. Quick out up top. Nice anticipation. Versus zero. Third and one. Again, I talked about the command at the line of scrimmage, the decisiveness, really nice job. Rookie quarterback, what, second-ish start? Nice job. Again, I love the idea of throwing it to that guy anytime he gets one-on-one, -on -one, but just watch the procedure here. You don't see a lot of this anymore. Line of scrimmage, oh, zero, check, check, check. We'll go gun, block it up, free access on the outside. I'll take a quick out. I'll pause it at the top. You can see the anticipation. He pats the ball right there. Look at Adams up top, not out of that route yet. The throw right on him, right on his grill. That is outstanding. It's just great quarterbacking, man. This high-level Sunday quarterbacking by a rookie, only a handful of starts, big-time third-down conversion. Third and one, we're audibling, throwing gun quick outs. I love it. Decisive, not taking a hit, strike, let's go. Next one here, third and six. This is a rough one because this could have been a really nice play. We're going to end up trying to get the number three on what I'm used to calling the special. This is the bones of four verticals out of three by one. Just instead of the one vertical, it's a shallow. A lot of teams run this play. This is really close to being a big time play. We'll talk about what I think the issues are here. It really starts with pass protection. 
I mean, where does this ball hit? It hits us right in the hands. I mean, right in the fingertips, maybe. Again, it's one of those easy ones to say, hey, catch one on one, get 17 the ball. I wouldn't be mad with that type of read either. I think the bones of this play, to me, go, seam, what I'm used to calling a special, just kind of that seam by the number three to the other side. So two, one, and then it's run with this shallow. So all go special shallow in West Coast verbiage. Now, the thing about this to me is it plays out like it's hot. It's really not hot. So the pass pro is the issue. I love verse man coverage, trying to work this guy because you've got all this space for him to run to, especially verse press. Now, this is really about knowing where the bones are buried on this specific play three by one with the shallow because you have this special route coming across. It almost works out like an over where you can really lay this thing out there. And that's kind of what he does. So I prefer verse man to go one here, two here, verse zone. I think it's easier to go one here, two here. You can also go off the middle field player. This middle field player is giving us bastard looks though, right? With wherever 17 is. So first here, I think he throws it to the right guy. I think it damn near hits him in the hands, maybe the fingertips. It's tough. Now the problem here is the pass protection. They have this pass protection like it's double mug. Okay, I already talked about how I like the back up here versus double mug. Again, double mug, two guys in the A gap here, the old Zimmer blitz. Okay, now the thing about this, okay, this is like giving the correct answer to the wrong question. And let me say that again. Correct answer, wrong question versus double mug. The double mug thing here only works if there's another defensive end. There's no defensive end here. Right? There, there's a there's a void in their front. So we don't have to have the center turning this way. And then the right tackle is turning to no one? Question mark? So when the back comes up here to try to blunt this and does a good job, and this linebacker type ends up trying to cross face here, the back actually tries to pick up this cross dog and does a valent job at trying to do it. But we don't have to do that shit. This is the crazy part. So if this is the thing, if this center is like, hey, I have to turn to the right. Let's just pretend we're in half two world. Okay, well then U3, go to U3. Then the back is right here soloed up. Boom. Okay, we can. I can live with that. I'm not mad at that. It's not how I would do it. It's not how I would want to do it. I would want to have the flexibility to go, okay, this is the front they're displaying. Five walked up to the line of scrimmage. Well, then we're essentially going to go 5-0 for us. Right? Right there. And then the back can... What to think about that? Move back and just go normal one to two or one to whoever. It just because they F up the pass protection, they don't allow Aiden O'Connell the ability to step into this thing and make this play. We got to make this play. We got to be more adaptive. Look at the back try to pass off the stunt with the center. Why are we turning to the right? Why again? Let me say it again. Why are we turning to the right? It's either a scheme or a line of scrimmage toolbox thing for the center and the quarterback. And again, hey, this is a lot to handle for a rookie quarterback. I'm not putting it on Aiden O'Connell that he should redirect the point here. But I would hope that the center, I would hope the pass protection unit could sort this out because that's going to be a big play. And the back does a decent job. I mean, the back takes two here. That's tough. Tough. Damn. Third and seven here. Now we're up by quite a bit, but the wheels start coming off a little bit. They bluff us here. We try to get into a little perimeter screen. Pretty sure 87 blocks the wrong guy. You know, bad news. Again, one of the things that I look at, don't hurt the new guy. One of the things that I look at is you just don't want a quarterback throwing and getting his guys hurt on the perimeter, getting hit like this very often. Now, to me, we probably don't block this correct with the number two down here to the bottom. You know, that that looks like a pretty simple, hey, you got to block 28. You got to block MDM. I'm not going to draw it up. You can sort it out. The number two to the bottom, he should block the most dangerous man. That is definitely 28. And that's sabotage Okay, so I don't necessarily put that on Aiden O'Connell. So that's why you watch the film, make try to make sense of this stuff. Now, is it going to get a first down? You know, is the wide receiver down here at the bottom clued in on what the hell the play is? Does, is he blocking? I, I don't know. It, it doesn't look like it's, you know, connected offense where guys know what the hell's going on. We've got blown assignment. We're getting guys hit. Again, we're getting exposed. And again, I know that they're up. 
a lot. I know it doesn't matter right here, punt, whatever, but this stuff is on film. Another weird one for me, up top, again, we're going to play action, big shot. This time we're probably a little tight to call this thing, but man, our guy 11 just stops. I don't know what the hell he's thinking. I mean, there's no excuse. You cannot stop like that. I'm not sure what he's looking at. There's nothing to look at. We're all looking at you. Now, he also probably lines up on the line of scrimmage, and it's a penalty because he covers up 87, so it wouldn't have counted regardless. But the stopping on film by the wide receiver unit is just, it, it can't happen. It can't happen once, let alone multiple times for big plays. And again, by this time in the video, you should probably be able to see they are not running traditional coverages, right? This is a really clear, easy pre-snap. They're hedging over here, if not bracketing full on. So we've got this huge opportunity for a one-on-one. -on -one. We already hit that play action inside go, right? Early in the game. I mean, maybe it's just me, but I probably would want to get to the post. I know that's super marker clicker guy on, you know, the day after the game type of vibe. But come on, guys, let, let's get to the post too. I mean, it, we can't be the, they got people in the box, right? We're communicating, play action post, maybe. I mean, come back to it. Let's go. Fire it up the next play. Maybe tell them to run the route. We can't be doing that. That that type of effort, that type of look around to me, it just, it it reeks of guys not knowing what the hell they're doing. The standard not being to play through these things. It's just not good offense. This look by 11 right here, it's not just a shade on him. It's a shade on the whole offensive unit. Like there is a disjointed element with either the standards, the expectations, the understanding, what the hell we're doing. And right on cue, uh, third and five, another what I'm going to call kind of dis disjointed effort. Now, again, we should see the coverage and know immediately that 17 is getting doubled. Already talked and alluded to, foreshadowed for some of you cats out there, the running back eight pass protection issues. Okay, this is not for me. This doesn't give yourself an opportunity to throw the ball. I've talked a lot on this channel in the past. I am not a fan of running backs cutting from the backfield just because even if you cut them, they're going to end up at the quarterback's feet sometimes if they jump over. But you can't go sidecar. You can't. Well, that ain't, that's never going to work. And this this block right here, in my opinion, causes us to miss a touchdown. You got to get up there and you got to blunt him and put your face mask in his chest. And if you can't, we got to get somebody else in there. That's just the reality of pass protection in the league. Now watch the new guy, 13, down here to the bottom, number two. Okay, also, I know it's not a new guy, so don't put it in the comments. If you put it in the comments, I'm going to know you didn't make it to this point in the video. New guy, bottom, post. We talked about post, right? With those bastard coverages, walk in. So it's one of those things for me here. This play can be designed to say, hey, we're trying to get a little rub here. We want this guy in the flat versus man coverage. That's the intent of the play. Okay, but coverage-wise here, what coverage is this? It's essentially zero. They're doubling over here. They've been doubling all game. We've gone to the sideline. We've communicated, hey, they're doubling 17. You got to do your part. We'll get it to you when we can. But this right here, what I just say the last play, let's get to the post. Just get to the post. Now, you can't get to the post when you're taking, you know, massive L's in the backfield trying to chop people and whiffing. So it's it's just, it's not one thing with this offense. I think Aiden O'Connell did some nice things, missed some things, but the whole thing feels like it's like a jigsaw puzzle, but there's only like 40% of the puzzle available. Like we're just missing so many chunk pieces here where there's opportunities, whether it's pass protection, whether it's, you know, spraying throws, whether it's footwork, whether it's seeing the coverage, whether it's getting this guy's exposed, guys missing assignments. It's a lot. So that is a wrap. Aiden O'Connell, the Raiders, nice win. You can certainly see just kind of the like weight come off a lot of the shoulders on that team. Pretty wild to see them smoking cigars after that thing. Good for them. Felt good for those guys, I'm sure, to get a win and get that thing going in hopefully the right direction. Now, offensive-wise, there were certainly some plays made. I thought the Giants gave them kind of some middle-of-the-field opportunities for some easy chunks. The big play down the field was also a really nice throw. But you could also see a little bit about maybe where the cracks are and what they're doing offensively. Whether that's coverage identification from a rookie who probably hasn't seen a whole lot of bastard third down coverages where guys are getting doubled, especially when you've got a guy like 17 who's going to demand so much attention. It's going to create a lot of one-on-ones other places. 
And so it's just about finding that sweet spot between getting him the ball, getting him touches, finding creative ways to get him touches, maybe a little bit more movement, less static kind of position in those types of critical down and distance, but then also being able to identify that and knowing where the one-on-ones are and maybe getting the ball out a little bit quicker and with a little bit more polished footwork as far as, you know, sometimes if it's not there, things get a little bit out of whack and you can see it kind of drifting backwards or feet coming together just makes those spray misses a little bit magnified in my opinion compounded with the fact that you know some pass pro holes certainly to say the least on some of those plays so all those things together make it occasionally you're going to have some kind of like third downs where you're like what the hell was that those types of things but versus a team like the giants with where they're at right now certainly enough to win certainly had some big plays in there as well certainly kind of got to be refreshing in that regard we'll see what it looks like moving forward i think it's you know certainly going to be hard if they continue to kind of kind of have those what I would classify as like blind spots offensively whether it's pass protection whether it's coverage identification where you just got to be able to kind of see those things a little cleaner quicker be a little bit more decisive protect your guys from big hits those types of things that just kind of jump off the film so we'll see what it looks like moving forward thank you so much for hanging to the end I will see you next time have a good one